got last week was how to organize your social media and where to be. In essence, you're streamlining. Well, if you watched last week's episode, you learned that we had to deep, dig deep down and learn a whole lot about our target audience before we could decide where we need to be. I am just going to assume that you watched last week's episode because I am obnoxiously positive. Now that you know exactly who you're talking to, we need to decide where you're going to connect with them. Better yet, where they want to connect with you. The sooner you shift your mindset to start thinking about what they want, the better off you'll be. For example, most pizza places would probably prefer you pick up the phone and give them a call. Cool. I prefer to pick up my phone and get on my app and order a pizza. So the pizza place that insists that we call and order, you just left money on the table. So now I'm going to break down the different social media platforms that you should definitely be considering if not on already. So let's break it down. So the first is Facebook, the daddy of them all. As Amy Schmetter of Savvy Sexy Social will tell you, this is where you rally the troops, where your current fans and brand evangelists are waiting for you. All you have to do is put yourself there and invite them to like you. It's a great place also to target new clients with sponsored stories or ads. So you absolutely have to be there. 43% of the users are male, and I believe 53.3%, something like that, are female between the ages of 25 and 55. Most surprisingly, 80% of those users are 55 and older. So don't try and tell me that you don't think that your target audience is on Facebook. Unless you're selling acne medication, your target audience is on Facebook. You may think to yourself, wait, my son's on Facebook, his girlfriend's on Facebook. The truth is that recently, a lot of teenagers, 13 to 18, even 18 to 25, have moved on to other social media platforms. Twitter, Twitter is my favorite. It's a lot like a cocktail party. It's a lot less formal, and it's all about networking. So the things you probably couldn't say on Facebook that are a little cheeky, you can absolutely get away with on Twitter. And then 140 characters or less, people are talking about their favorite products, what they're eating, who they love, their favorite celebrities. And not only that, they can speak and connect with them because majority of the users on Twitter, their profiles are public. So you're really, there's really no disconnect between the two. I about peed myself when my first celebrity replied to me. Not only can they connect with you, you can find them. It's amazing for geo-targeting. So let's say that you're a locksmith and you use their search, their advanced search function and write in the exact phrase, locked my keys in my car. And then you say the city that you're in or you type in the city that you're in. Somebody that locked their keys in their car probably tweeted about it and you could be the first on the scene. So not only do you have a new customer, you're building a new relationship and then they probably will retweet that and you'll get in front of all of their followers. That's the beauty of Twitter. What you say isn't just restricted to the people that follow you. If somebody likes it, they retweet it and all of their followers see it. So it's just one big party. And the best part is there's no disparity about sexual orientation, ethnicity, none of that. Education, annual income, they're all over the place. At the end of the day, on Facebook, you can't seek out yourself new clients and reach out and message them, um, invite them to like you unless they're your personal friend first or they make the decision to like you. With Twitter, you can actually find them and interrupt a conversation with your opinion and it's not like creepy or weird, it's just, it's helpful. So you're reaching more people than you could, new clients than you could on Facebook. So next up is Pinterest. Pinterest reminds me of a jewelry party that my mother-in-law or one of my friends would throw. You walk in and all this jewelry is laid out for you and you start to visualize yourself wearing it and what you would wear it with and who you would wear it with and where you would wear it and you really start to see yourself in it and then you buy it. 
for the most part. So that's what Pinterest is. It's boards of aspiration. Cars you want to drive, clothes you want to wear, people you want to hang out with, houses you want to buy. And sometimes you even visualize the spouse that you share that house with. So if, you, if your target audience is women, you have no other option. You absolutely have to be on Pinterest, especially if it's a visually driven market, interior design, music, art, really anything that catches somebody's eye and you have a product to sell, it's, deba it's undebatable. You have to do it. Along with seeing their aspirational boards, as a business, you have it laid all out in front of you. You want to know exactly what they love and what they want to buy. It's right there in front of you. It doesn't get any easier than that. Instagram, Katie's personal favorite and my guilty pleasure. My favorite, my personal favorite time to look at Instagram is on Saturday mornings because everybody went out the night before and they take pictures of their spouses, their friends, selfies, where they're at, their favorite food, what they like to do in their downtime. And I don't know about you, but that's what I need to know about my ideal customer. I need to know what they're reading, what they're eating, what they do in their downtime. Like I said before, you just can never know too much about your ideal client. And not only do you get all this information, it's extremely visually appealing. And it's easy. And everybody's on it. It, I mean, it just does not get any better than Instagram and the hashtags. It's, it's categorized for you. It's an index of who's talking about what. If you're in the wedding industry and you don't have a pop-in Instagram, let me help you. Let me help you. It's unbelievable. I don't know about you, but when somebody likes one of my pictures and I, the name doesn't look familiar, I go directly to their profile. I look at them. I see how many followers they have, see what they've got going on. And 50% of the time, I go to their website. And 25% of the time, I've actually bought one of their products. So give it a shot. I know it's scary. You have to try it. Obviously, there are 500 million, 277 social media channels. I'm not saying you need to be on all of them. The idea is for you to laser target your ideal audience and spend the majority of your time and effort on those platforms. And for me, I have found those platforms the most beneficial. I don't want to hear, but none of my friends are on Facebook and Instagram interests, so I don't think that I should be. Well, unless your client list or unless you want your client list to begin and end with your friends, you need to get all the way over it, suck it up, and get on the social media channels. I want to take a second and tell you about a great example of laser targeting your audience and also leveraging social media. A great friend of mine, Kristen Cotter, founded uh, Ryan Porter Jewelry out of her apartment in Columbus, Ohio. And she was just recently featured in People Style Watch in their hashtag trending section, which is pretty much the pinnacle of her career at this point. She's so excited. But what I want to touch on is that I can promise you, if you look at her Instagram feed or followers, they are targeted. They are fashion magazines. They are bloggers, fashion bloggers. They are the people that are most interested in what she's doing. She hustles. She makes connections. Nobody can take that away from her. She has earned it by taking the time to laser target and build relationships with these people, these bloggers, these companies. So check her out on uh, Instagram at shop Ryan Porter, Facebook, facebook.com slash, I think it's just Ryan Porter. Um, and leave her a little comment and tell her how great she is. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fred Darling TV. If you have any questions, obviously leave them in the comments below or tweet us at, at, at underscore Fred Darling or go to facebook.com slash Fred Darling Studio or visit us online at www.freddarlingstudio.com. Also, leave your email address. We can deliver these right into your inbox with funny, juicy, secret emails that go out every weekend as well. So thank you and have a great day.